Well, we recognise Pythagoras' theorem by considering a right angle triangle. In this example here, we have a right angle triangle uh, where two sides are actually given. And we've got to find the length of the third side. So we know it's definitely, definitely Pythagoras' theorem. And to move forward on the Pythagoras question, what we need to do initially is to state the formula that Pythagoras gave to us many years ago. Now Pythagoras said, effectively, that this longest side here the hypotenuse, which is always opposite the right angle, um, he gave us this, that um, the h squared is equal to um, a squared plus b squared. And a and b are the two sides um, here and here. So what we're going to do to, to solve this Pythagoras question is we're going to actually substitute our values into our formula. So my first line would be that h squared is equal to 12 squared plus 5 squared. So that picks up my first method mark in the exam. And when I progress forward with this, my next line would simply be that h squared is equal to, now I know that 12 squared is 144. I know that 5 squared is equal to 25. And when I add these two results together, um, I can see that h squared is actually equal to 169. And all the time, my strategy is to state the formula to substitute the values in, to work it out, and I've now got most of the marks, and I know that h squared is equal to 169. My final bit is to actually find the value of h. Now I've got that h squared is equal to 169, so I need to undo the concept of squaring something. And the opposite of squaring something, or unsquaring something, is actually to take the square root. So my next line is to say that h is equal to the square root of 169. I then have to think to myself, what number, when multiplied by itself, gives me 169? I know that's 13, because 13 squared is 169. So I can say that h is equal to 13 meters. So in summary, I state my formula, I substitute my values, I progress, I work out a value, I check the answer sensible, and I can see that the longest side, this hypotenuse value, um, is considered to be uh, 13 meters. Now sometimes in an exam, uh, we're given uh, another situation involving um, a right angle triangle, two sides are given, but on this occasion we may be given the hypotenuse. So in the second example, what I have is a scenario whereby the longest side is already given to me. So I've got to be really, really careful in exam situation to make sure I don't just rush in and pop in our numbers for eight and, eight and 10 meters respectively. I state my formula, I state that h squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, just like Pythagoras wanted us to do all those years ago. But then I just pause for a moment and I say to myself, well actually, I'm actually given the longest side already, so I've got to be really, really careful at the outset. Because I know that the hypotenuse given is 10 meters, my first line of attack is to say that 10 squared is equal to eight squared plus x squared. And the good news here is it doesn't really matter whether I put 8 squared plus x squared or x squared plus 8 squared. So whether that's a and that's b, or whether that's b and that's a, it doesn't really matter. My next method mark um, is established when I make progress on this, and I say that 10 squared is actually equal to 100. My 8 squared is equal to 64. And I've now got my x squared on the end there. So I know that 100 is equal to 64 plus x squared. Because my ultimate objective is to find the value of x to get x on its own, my next step is to take away 64 from each side of the equations. There we go. So I take 64 from the left-hand side, I take 64 from the right-hand side, and that gives me 36 is equal to x squared. Now, like in the previous example, I've almost finished, almost home and dry. What I'm now going to do is to take the square root of each side. So I can say that x is equal to the square root of 36. 
and the square root of 36 is actually 6. So I've now finished and my solution in this particular example is that x is equal to 6 metres. So Pythagoras' theorem easily identified as being a right angle triangle where two sides are given, we've got to find the length of the third side. If I be very clear about formula, substitute, work out, check, and show nice sequential, clear, concise method work, I'm going to get the full marks. So from the Collins team, best of luck for the exams, and that's the revision clip on Pythagoras' theorem.